So let's get started by assembling the tooling for our propellers uh, on this airplane. So we're going to pop these two little guys out. We'll get some CA glue. And what you're going to do is just glue these. You don't have to glue them at the ends. You can kind of glue them a little short of the ends, which is actually better. So like that. And now, what we'll do is run glue along the top of these. You don't have to center this up perfectly, but the point is that you want to deck this on in a curve like that. And so you can see the result is this curved shape like so. Second piece of tooling is, of course, this propeller pitch gauge. We'll just pop all the parts out of here. And so you have to be very careful with the orientation of this because it assembles like this, not like this because this will give you a reverse rotation propeller and then you will be confused. So flip it over. All of the tooling that we use for model airplanes is set up, or at least for indoor, is set up for standard rotation propellers. Um, so you want to be very careful to assemble this pitch gauge to account for that, so that the torque of the motor tends to turn the airplane to the left. So you can see this is how it's set up so far. Now we're going to take these little guys and they notch in here, like that. And also you'll have one that fits up top. And there we go. So there's our propeller pitch gauge. The next step is to take these propeller blades loose. These propeller blades are made from um, fairly light 132nd balsa. And we're trying to take as much weight off the front of the airplane as possible. And so I highly recommend after you uh, deburr all the edges that you sand these blades down. You want to try to get the blades sanded about the same, uh, which I, I admit is challenging uh, if you haven't done it before. Uh, but the bottom line is we want to sand particularly this front area of the blades and out here at the tips. This area in here is not as important, but out here, um, and really if you draw like a line across like that, anything forward of that needs to be sanded. And the reason for that is that makes your propeller flare to a higher pitch under load. And this is how I'm able to get the long flights that I get out of my uh, insensitive is by um, sanding the blades down really, really thin and the result then is a, a very, very nice flaring propeller. Um, and with that, you can uh, get very, very good flight times. Got a ways to go on that one. 
region in my sandpaper that's not completely toast and kind of coming up empty here. sand these blades till they are almost paper thin. Be careful sanding the way I'm doing because you can really damage your blades and completely destroy them if you're not careful. I'm doing this because I've got cruddy cruddy sandpaper. I don't know if it... Uh, I can't shine a light through it to show you real well. Um, I'm going to get a new batch of sandpaper and we'll continue. Okay, let's continue. And I'm not pressing down, I'm just riding the sanding block across the top and basically just using the weight of the block itself to do my sanding here. You don't want to press down at all, or you can catch the crop blade and, um, and damage it um, quite badly. So here's what we're going to do. I'll show a flashlight here. I don't know how well this shows up. If you can see. Let's see. We'll set a, there we go. A dimmer setting there. I don't know if it shows up just how much thinner the blade is there. We'll compare. If you can see this one, this blade is much, much more transparent than this one. There we go. Sorry. Um, I'm going to keep sanding away at this guy. Blade's starting to get very nice and flexible as compared to this one. I'm going to sand away at the back here. Because this area doesn't really see a whole lot of load. Paper this down too. I think I can get a little bit thinner out there. paper thin out here at the tips. Just as an additional measure here, I'll show you with a digital scale. Nope, wrong button. There we go. So our yet to be sanded blade 728 milligrams, the one we have sanded, is 496, so quite a bit of weight savings there. Um, still feels a little on the stiff side to me. So, I'm going to sand in this area too.
Ideally, we would like our completed propeller to be under one gram. Probably not going to happen. This is a uh, less nice piece of wood that I've used for this set of blades. Normally, we include a little bit lighter wood. and flexy. Four hundred and twenty four, so we took about uh, what was that about seventy milligrams off of there, which is um, you multiply that times two, that's one hundred and um, forty milligrams, that's substantial. Got one little thick spot right here we get rid of. And now we're going to do the same thing with this propeller. I'm probably not going to show all of this on camera because that seems like a complete and total waste. So we'll wait. I'll come back once I've got most of it sanded out. Okay, so we've got this second blade sanded out part way. Let's see what our, what our progress is on this. About four or seven. Oh, wait a minute. 477. So this one feels stiffer, so that means it's actually some heavier wood, or lighter wood, I should say, than the other one. So we'll take a bunch of weight off of here, and at the same time, we'll soften up this blade. Or 10 or so, so fairly close. And we're nice and flexible, paper thin out at the tips, fairly stout in here, so we're good. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our propeller blades and we're going to go soak them in water. So we'll get them wet and then we'll come back and we'll um, form these up. Alright, so I have soaked these two propeller blades, they're nice and wet. So what we're going to do is we're going to stack them on top of each other um, as close to exact alignment as possible. And now we're going to orient them this way, not this way, this way. And don't try flipping it over, getting it wrong, you know, what have you. And by the way, this is the sanded side. I kind of like it to be on the outside. And so we're going to set these. This is about a... 15, 20 degree angle right here. So we're going to set this on here. I'm going to take a um, paper towel that I have used for some other purpose. And what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this around here nice and tight. I may need to get a new paper towel. This one's not cooperating. This one's not going to do it. My lovely assistant is bringing me one. Thank you. What we'll do is we'll start it with some um, masking tape here. Put it on the bottom. The goal is to kind of tension this on here. So now, stick this assembly in your oven at 200 for at least 20-30 um, minutes. Make sure it's thoroughly dry. 
So we have removed our propeller blades from the oven. Tape has actually stuck pretty well onto the, on the paper towel there. And our propeller blades are actually stuck together. So just gently tease them apart like so. And now you've got two very nicely curved uh, propeller blades. Next, take your propeller spar out here. Mine seems to be made from some exceptionally hard balsa, so it's not wanting to come out any too easily. Wow. That's actually a good thing, because it means the spar is going to be nice and strong. Okay, there is kind of like a little pinhole right here in the middle. I don't know if it's even showing up. What you're going to do is take your propeller shaft. And we're going to test fit it through that hole. Now if you can't see the hole on the other side, that means it has not penetrated all the way through, which occasionally does happen. So you have to punch this through, like that. Now before you permanently affix that propeller shaft, you need to put a washer on it. This thin little thing is Teflon tubing. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off a piece that's only about less than a sixteenth of an inch long. See how short that is? Now, if you're careful, you can thread the propeller shaft onto that. Mine is being stubborn, so I may have to get creative. Threaded on there. Or threaded, well, forced on there. Actually on. And on it goes. Slide it a ways down. Now. Compare this to your bearing. Make sure that there's plenty of space back here. So in my case, I'm going to push this back. And we'll slide the bearing actually up there against so that we're, we ensure there's plenty of room with the nose against the, the um, tubing, not the, not the spar, but the tubing, um, that there's plenty of room for this prop shaft to turn, uh, the hook to turn around. Now, take the pliers, grab, square with the end. Pull the spar and that washer back, maintain that position, and bend this over 90 degrees. Like that. Leave about that much, about a, less than a quarter of an inch sticking out. Like that. Now squirt with it in this position, squirt CA on here. And pull the shaft back through, kind of move it around because you want to pull some of that CA back through to the other side. Make sure the whole end of the shaft there is surrounded with glue. Get it square as best you can, and you're good to go.
fold that um, washer on up here. And now the way this is going to work is we're going to drop that guy into these two grooves. Take some masking tape here and just cut a break off a real thin narrow strip like that. And what we're going to use to do with that is entrap this prop shaft all the way around like so. Like that. And now what we will do is thread one of our propeller blades on. And it's not going to, this far is not going to fit all the way through there. It's going to fit kind of like that. Now if you notice, I'm not resting against the leading edge, I'm resting against there, and that's fine. Now, um, in practice, I actually recommend using white glue for this join. Um, it just gives you a, a better a better joint. Um, I'm going to use CA here because this is a video and I'm in a hurry. So this is not going to be one of my best penny plane props, but it'll be okay. Um, the issue is with white glue, you have to put this blade on here, uh, maybe use some straight pins to hold everything in place, and then walk away for uh, a good hour or so, and just let it dry. secure. And now we get our first look at the fact that it's a flaring propeller. Twist that prop shaft back around the other way here. And we're going to repeat that procedure again. And again, you want to make sure the blade is in contact here and here with this when you actually complete the glue join. Please excuse my son who is having a little fun doing his own airplane project. Yeah. And there we go. There's a completed propeller. So now we have a complete airframe and a complete propeller. So let's join the two together for the first time. So we thread this propeller, the end of the propeller shaft. Sorry, I'm having trouble seeing it. Uh, this one actually appears to have a little bit of flashing in there. Sorry guys, eyes are playing games on me here. Y'all know this thing fits because it was on here earlier. Try 
something different. I'm going to bend the end of it out here a little bit. And I'm actually going to snip the very end of that hook off so it's sharp. And now it should, but it doesn't. It's starting to go in. A giant hunk of glue came out when I put that in there. Alright, so let me show you. Once you've got this thing threaded through here, slot the shaft over like that, slide back, and now it's actually latched in place. And there you go. fire up our scale here. I suspect this one came out a little on the heavy side, but I could be surprised. Oh yeah, it's a porker. And it'll still be a good airplane. But it is 4.5 uh, yeah, grams. It's a little on the heavy side. But it'll fly just fine. So, next task, we're going to make a rubber motor that is 18 inches long, and so I'm just going to use the wingspan for that, like so. to get out this O-ring tubing right here. And I'm going to snip off an end of it. It's about that long. I don't know if the camera's not focusing real well, but... Actually, let me set it on the razor blade here. So you guys can kind of see. And I'll snip off a second one. Now, on my uh, rubber here, I'm actually going to diagonal cut the end here. And that makes it easier for me to thread this through the O-ring because I can then, with a little manipulation, force that through there. Excuse the complaints of number two son in the background. Now I'm going to take some rubber lubricant here. I just want a tiny swab of it here. I'm only doing it on one side here. Tie a knot. I'll tie a knot in the end, like so. A little bit of glue in it. Oops. And there we go. Next step. Squirt a little more. By the way, this is Dow Corning 33 rubber lubricant. Highly recommend it. Uh, I think it's the best there is. And there we go. Get the o rings off on the ends. Knot can be kind of in the middle. Don't really want it at the ends. And the rubber motor is ready to go.
Hi, I'm Josh Finn. This is Hope. We are J&H Aerospace. If you like this video, hit the like button. Also, how about subscribe to our channel and check out jhaerospace.com for new free flight products and all of the tooling that you'll need to build them. Thanks for watching.